Good evening, everyone. What a great joy to see you, and welcome to Saturday show of Pastoral Talk together with Reverend Dr. Joshua Yung, and we have a very wonderful pastor today, and I'm sure that you're going to be blessed. You hear a lot of great story from Pastor Chema Wencher. Would you please just put our hand together and welcome Pastor Chema Wencher into the show. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's such a blessing to be here. Such a blessing to see you here as uh, Pastor Chema. And we have been talking a little bit on the radio station, and today I, it's my privilege to interview and uh, Pastor Chema was interviewing me on the radio and now I'm interviewing her on this yes. Vision TV. We did four shows. Amen. And it's they a... love you. Oh, thank you so <laughs> much. And I pray that you will also be blessed and we are going to hear wonderful stories. So Pastor Chema, would you please just share a little bit about your background, your name, your ministry so that the people will get to know you. Um, I'm Pastor Gemma Winger and my ministry is Gemma Winger Ministries, and I'm called to evangelize to the nations Amen. using television, radio, the media, hallelujah, going places directly, but just singing and preaching the word of God, laying hands on the sick and they shall recover, moving in the gifts of the spirit, allowing a free flow of the spirit. Um, allowing body ministry when you come together everyone has a song a psalm a sermon a doctrine a teaching and a revelation wow that's a lot <laughs> yeah yeah so anyway but i could go on <laughs> and i'm telling you she's very gifted so would you please uh, before i i go back to your background i i know that you come uh, god give you the gift of composing a lot of songs would you please tell us a little bit about your gifting in music and how do you find that music gifting or the ministry well ever since i was young i sang and my mom always wanted to be in acting and music and she actually was tone deaf she couldn't sing but i inherited my grandfather's ability to sing because he was in the church and they would have a tuning fork and then they would hit that note and then they would sing without music it was in the christian apostolic church Wow. So God blessed me with the ability to sing, and I had such a desire to sing, I would go to the store and I would buy the performance tracks. You would hear these artists like Sheila Walsh and um, all these, uh, you know, Hill songs and these wonderful songs, and I would go and buy the performance track, and I would teach myself, and I would write down the lyrics if they didn't have them there. And then I would do praise and worship, wow. doing all these performance tracks. And then I said, you know, I need to start writing songs. So I wrote like five songs, but literally it was 20 years ago I wrote these five songs. And I would sing them in my praise and worship and when wow. people asked me to do praise and worship. But it was only recently that the Lord put a gentleman in my path who was able to uh, produce the song at an extremely high professional level. He has a CD and it's amazing. And then also, so it's going to be on iTunes and CD Baby probably within the next two weeks. Wow, wonderful. Trust. So, so what, is, uh, what are the name of those songs? Would you please just introduce a little bit those songs to the audience so that be ready. I, I'm sure you will, you will be blessed with those songs. Oh, well, praise God. Well, I've got to tell you, I mean, I was never one who thought that I was going to write songs, but the Lord puts a new song in your heart. And so the one that I just kept singing over and over and over again that, that seemed to minister to the people was trust. Trust the Lord in everything. Amen. Trust when trials come your way. Praise trust when pain and grief are everywhere. Trust when you don't see the light god will make a way amen he'll do just what he said and there may be some bumps in the road for a while um the enemy was trying to attack my singing and i was i was doing too much and i kind of stopped singing but then all of a sudden the lord brought it back in his way in his plan so there may be a season of waiting there may be a season where you feel like things aren't happening but it's coming, it's coming, and the Lord just 
orchestrated it and put these amazing people in front of me who could make that happen. Professional musicians. Amen. They, they knew each other and a $4,000 microphone so I could <laughs> sing my song. You know, you got to have everything in the natural as well as the gift and the talent and in the spiritual. Amen. For those who are there, <laughs> be ready for musicians. Be ready that the new song that the Lord is going to give you and you will be surprised not only about the song, about the music, music ministry maybe God can open a door for you to write a books maybe God also open the door for you to have a new business project in a way that you never even imagine or dare to dream before and be ready for that in 2019 and uh, uh, will you be okay later on if you sing some of those songs for the people later on um I I have the music yeah we'll definitely sing trust praise the lord but you were talking about books and yes. i want to say Ooh. hallelujah praise the lord these are a lot of books but praise god i never thought i would write when i was little i was like how could anybody be a writer that's like the most boring thing i could ever think of mm. and all of a sudden god developed in me this talent to write i mean i had great training i went to great schools mm. and then a wonderful lady named Jeannie defazio she came up and she said, Gemma, you have a background in the Catholic charismatic movement and uh, moving in the gifts of the spirit and acting and singing and different ministry. And so I want you to write a few paragraphs oh. in this book, Creative Ways to Build Christian Community, that you're not just preaching to people, but you're putting on plays and shows and you're getting out there on the streets and like you did yeah. with the cross, telling people about the Lord. So I wrote, this is Creative Ways to Build Christian Community. So this community. is the first one that uh, you can find this in creative ways to view christian and it's community it's available on amazon so if it's within stock publishing so i have my cameo appearance okay. in there we were especially talking about a gentleman named mr grace and then my mom has a chapter in here and i also have a chapter it's redeeming the screens that oh. we're taking back the media we're taking back the screens the television screens the computer screens the ipads Whatever it is, we are redeeming the screens for the Lord. And so I just, it's just a very short testimony, but I wrote chapter 11, and it's on unity, that we have to be united in the spirit because Amen. the devil is trying to cause division. So that's also available on Amazon. Redeeming the screen. I think that you need to say a little bit more about this one and the challenge people, though else there who have been very addicted with the screen, with the iPad, computer, would you please just encourage people somewhere? Well, we need to use the computers and the iPads for God's glory. Mm. So we need to be watching videos, I mean, even on YouTube, of Christian mm. ministers. We need to be listening to worship music out of those, those screens, out of our phones, out of our iPads etc etc even when you're going to the movies you need to be going to christian movies and yes. nowadays when when i grew up i was in acting but there weren't christian movies and mm. actually i got out of it as i got into my late teens because i didn't want to read for a part that yeah. didn't glorify god and i didn't want to do a part that didn't glorify god and i love to act and i i had a talent and that was one thing my mom spent money on i had four years of acting class at the beverly hills playhouse wow. with milton and lynette Kinsellis. and so the thing though is is that i really realize it's the writers the writers have to write scripts for god about the lord and they need to be talented in their writing as well as spiritually on the mark spiritually enlightened so again we're taking back the movie screens for the lord and it has for example susan stafford wrote a chapter and then we have mel novak and uh, we also have ted bear of movie guide he gives awards to morally good movies and things like Amen. that so praise god it's so exciting you see pastor Chema is as a pastor music composer <laughs> composer she worship leaders 
She's also an artist, an uh, acting, uh, uh, how I say that, uh, actress yes, uh, here. And yes. you will hear more about that. But at the moment, I want to challenge a little bit for those people there. You have been so much addicted into the computer, into game, into internet. And recently that we have seen a lot of uh, a short video about even the children, even the infants, only about three years old or four years old, and they have been addicted, and the parent cannot do anything but only give the iPad or the iPhone. Or whenever they don't give, and you see on those short videos, the children just, just run over and screaming, and when the parent just give that iPhone or iPad immediately, it's keep very quiet, and just become to focus on that. And some parents begin to say, oh, this is the way that I can keep my children being quiet. Baby but I'm center. telling you, that is a big mistake. You are now educating your children into that violent spirit. And you will begin to see that many children later on, they not only being addicted to the, that, but they will begin to addicted to the violence, addicted to some of the movie that talk about very scary about ghosts. And later on, you will begin to find your children just begin to act in a very, very strange way, or they are no longer being able to communicate with other people, their interpersonal skill was lost, and you see, begin to see a lot of things happen when the children just lock themselves in the, in the door, they begin to hear other voices, they begin to see the dark shadow will come up on their life, and later on you see that they are not going to go out to work, and they're just being there, and sometimes we think that is the stage of depression. Yes, you know, when they are watching those violent mm. video games, that spirit of murder yes. comes on them, that spirit of violence, that spirit of anger, and it takes a hold of them, and it grows, and it bears fruit, and that's why you have these serial killers, that's why you have these massacres where people oh. are taking guns yeah. into schools and killing and shooting people. It comes because they are demon-possessed, and they picked exactly. up this demon from these video games. I truly believe that video games are the number one reason that we are producing killers in America today. That's true. Many countries, many nations already already found that the problems. That is one of the issue, one of not only just about the family issue, but game, video game. You see that many movies, many games begin to introduce the violence. It introduce the tactic of how to kill other people, how to destroy other people. It begins to expose the children into love, sex, and, and so many, many things. So parents out there, try to listen to the advice of Pastor Chema here. Begin to let our children to listen to the gospel music. And you see that I remember when I was the university professor in, uh, in one of the university, famous university in the Philippines. And you know that the children, the students, they usually have the concert and then they begin to uh, take the bill or the medicine. And then just like this, they just like this, three hours nonstop. And they didn't know. And when they sing about the song, dead about hate or something like that. That's very dangerous, and many times we don't. If we thought that's very normal, that is the way that society developed. No, that's not normal. That is abnormal. And we want to encourage you there as a parent, and even the young people and the children try to stay away from that. But you know, that's one thing is that you cannot stay away from that. You need the counselor, you need the pastor, you need God help so that you can overcome that. What do you think about that, Pastor Chema? Well, I know I graduated from UCLA and I have a master's degree in educational administration. Mm. So I work with children in education. And the first thing was, I never went to an arcade. So I didn't play any of those games. But when I was at UCLA, they had an arcade there. And all of a sudden, I see four guys they are, I got a lot of books here, they are kicking the door down to get out the door. Oh, oh They're goodness. jumping on top of the furniture. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what, that spirit on those video games is on them. That they have just opened themselves up to that spirit and they have received that darkness. And 
Satan says to you, oh, like all of a sudden on the video games, you're shooting people, you're shooting people, you see blood, etc. It's it's mm. in the video game. But then all of a sudden Satan says, what if you did that yourself? And then you develop an appetite mm. for murder and to um, torment people and a spirit of perversion mm. that comes on you. And it was very interesting. The other day I have a prayer meeting church meeting on Monday nights and Friday nights and I have two little members they're like yeah I saw that did you see that <laughs> and they were there and they just raised an hand and worshiped yeah, the Lord to, to, it was a, a New Year's Eve service that I was ministering at with Pastor Manny it was his New Year's Eve service mega praise and they're just worshiping the Lord and honoring God and that's using Facebook live that's using the iPhone for the glory of God mm. but they've been trained they come to my meetings and ever since they were born I prayed over them and laid hands on them and they have such a sweet spirit of God and they exactly. say to their parents they always say can we go to Pastor Jealous we want to pray we want to pray Amen. and their parents use it like as a reward that okay you guys have been really good you can go to Pastor Jealous but it's like they're the ones who are bringing their parents to the meeting and the other thing was is that they have such a sweet spirit and such a kind spirit and on my dining room table I have the tangerines yeah. and I have the candy yes. right and so all of a sudden they're going for the tangerines and I was like don't you guys want any candy and the mom looks at her the little girl Haley she goes and she's about to reach for it and she says now Haley you already ate you don't need that and Haley just goes Mm. And she walked away, and she was so obedient because her spirit was so soft. Exactly. And nowadays, children who are exposed to all this darkness, their spirit is so hard, they're so rebellious, they're so stubborn. It's not a joy to discipline them. It is a hardship. It is so difficult. It's not fun. And the thing is, when the spirit of the Lord is in your heart, it's a soft spirit, a spirit that wants to listen. So again, we have to feed our children the word of God. Amen. Every moment is important. That's what the Bible said, that train the child the way that they should go. So that when they grow old, they will not forget about that one. So we need to train our children biblical and godly way. And many, I can tell you, living in Asia, especially in North Asia, where we see that one child policy. And you can see where one child policy, the children become just like the queen, become the prince and the princess. Whatever they want, that basically most of the parents, or if the parent did not give them, the grandparent will give them. So they nurture that kind of attitude. And sometimes they become so self-centered. They become so selfish. We're not only talking about the violence. We're not only about the murdering spirit. We're not only talking about the oppression. We're not talking only about the behavior or the habits that we are forming in the life of the children. But we're also talking about the mindset that they only want to get it for themselves. But when, they, when we train them in the church, in the Sunday school, we're talking about love. We're talking about sharing. We're talking about kindness to one another. So parents, you know that after five or six years old, that at that time, it basically, the personality of that children is almost beginning to be formed. And you can hardly change them after that. So if you want to train your child, train them before that age. So, uh, and, and this is also the word of, oh, I found a new, new term, educator, okay? That's right. The music composer, right. worship leader, pastor, <laughs> writer, right. and then artist, and here, educator. Okay. Right, and then I also wrote a chapter in this book. I, I don't even have the plastic off. It's my, my own copy but it's empowering English language learners, oh. successful strategies of Christian educators. But I went into the classroom as a teacher, and I was the perfect child. I was the perfect student. I, I, mm. I recall that I got in trouble twice in school for talking my whole entire career. I always did the right thing. And when I went to Watts, when I went to South Los Angeles, I thought that everybody would just do the right mm. thing. Well, they didn't, and I didn't have any tools or strategies. 
I got the worst class that anybody could hope for. It was a first grade class, and the seasoned teacher before me, she said, I've never had a worse kindergarten class. <laughs> and I got them in first grade. But through that, I learned how to properly discipline, that you teach behavior just like you teach reading or math or English language mm -hmm. arts. I would go into a classroom. I started out subbing, and at first I would be afraid because I thought I wouldn't be able to control them. Now I can control whole auditoriums. Mm. We just we just discuss the behavior. We look at what it looks like. We practice it. I focus in, you know, give a few positives. Mm. And, you know, there's just so many different ways to discipline. It's not about hitting your child or spanking your child. That is the absolute last resort. There are mm. so many other ways, but especially getting your child in the Word. Because my dad had me praying um, hallelujah, I started about in, I believe it was around fifth grade, I started out with 15 minutes a day, and then I went up to an hour. So my heart was softened, so when people talk to me, I really listen. Mm. But there are some really, really difficult, difficult cases, and the Lord has strategies for you to manage that behavior, especially you were talking about giving a child everything they want. Mm. You know, they're going to ask for something, and when you say no, they're going to tantrum. Yeah. Yes. In no way can you give them what they want to stop the tantrum. You can say, you know what, when you stop tantruming, then we can discuss exactly. what you want. But as long as you're tantruming, you will in no way get what you are asking for because I'm not going to reward the tantrum. Mm. There are positive rewards, positive reinforcement, and there's negative mm. reinforcement. And you have to have a schedule. You have to have a plan. The children have to know what's expected, and you have to be consistent. But you have to break that spoiled brat spirit. It's true. And I, with that, I also want to challenge you a little bit. You know that uh, today that many parents begin to, uh, they ask this question and sometimes we call it about freedom and we call it democratic, we call it respecting the children, but sometimes that I think that we need to make a principle. What, what do I want to say here? To my children since they was young, I said that you can negotiate with me many things. But one thing that you can never negotiate with me, that is going to church. On Sunday, you have to go to church. And whenever you're busy, you go to church first, and then you can do other things, and I'm okay with that. But today, many parents will not be like that. Oh, we ask like this, do you want to go to church today? Definitely, the children will say, oh, I'm busy, right? right. Why don't you ask, do you eat today? <laughs> do you drink today? Do you go to work today? There are certain things in life that we know that is a foundation. And if we begin to discipline the children in that way, then you will see that they will grow in their spirituality. They will grow in character. Today, many parents begin to, because we teach the children that way. Oh, you want to go to church with me today? And as time goes by, we see that they never go to go church any, anywhere anymore. And more than that, they begin to become that the children of the world, not the children of God anymore. So this is simply, maybe it's something, it's a very simple thing, but it takes a lot of discipline. And when you wait until they become like a teenager, it's impossible. At that time, you have to respect them. At that time, we said we back them. Would you please just come to church together? So there would be some spiritual principle that I would like to encourage the parents. Train your child from very beginning to read the Bible. And I, if one day that when my children can come here, and you can see my children, they begin to talk about the Bible. Every day that we have to read from the beginning, we read only one scripture. And then we increase to one chapter a day. And nowadays, my children, every day, they read at least about three chapters a day. And not only that, reading, and they love it, they discuss together, and they ask many questions that I was even puzzled if I am not prepared for that one. So there will be, we call the discipline, spiritual discipline about the devotion time, the time that we can spend together to pray together. Sometimes if we're busy, at the beginning I teach my children to pray only about two sentences or three sentences. And now they can pray for 10 minutes, they can pray, sometimes they go into the 
prayer house and they can stay there for a long time so we want to challenge you and we're talking about the christian education the way that we know is good we're training them with the word of god we're training them with a good character and we will training them to love one another in which the world cannot train them so we are going back with pastor Gemma in part number two and that is just in introduction. You know, we have a long introduction today. And now, uh, which place, Pastor, would you be to tell a little bit more about some of other books? And what is the book project that you are starting now or you want to write about? Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I know that I do want to write about my testimony and mm. my life and the revelation that God has given me. And these are just little excerpts of what I really would like to say, but I really believe that when you write a book, you really have to be prompted mm. by God. You have to be led by God, and mm. He has to inspire you, yeah. because there's a lot of books out there, but you really have to know how to market mm. your book. And I, I wrote a, um, I'm on the back cover here, I wrote a little um, discourse here on Berkeley Street Theater for my friend as well. But I have numerous friends, and they've written books, and they go on book tours, mm. and they're able to get into churches and, and talk about their books. So it's really important. Once you have a book, and it's there on Amazon, you have to draw people to that book, and mm. you have to encourage them what? to buy it and to read it. So um, I know that this is um, Praise Jesus. Actually, I forgot uh, Josie Pollock's, but this is Jeannie DeFazio's. There's another one I brought. <laughs> Praise Jesus, but I forgot that one. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Backstage Pass to Heaven, Josie Pollock. It's a great book how she was uh, going to go uh, to Sharon Tate's on the night of the Manson murders, and she had a headache and she couldn't go, mm. and God spared her life. So that was Backstage Pass to Heaven. And so... Um, you know, even my mom, she she was a pioneer. She was an entrepreneur. She wrote this book, Food Drawing at Home, The Natural Way Without Chemicals or Preservatives. Wow. And you get she, that copy. <laughs> yes, yes. And she also... It's called Food Drawing <laughs> at Home, The, the natural, natural Way. Without yeah. Chemicals or Preservatives. And... Um, she did a fantastic job. It was it was published by Hoot Mifflin Company. So God is good. But um, so many times I was growing up, and it was like um, my mom only let us eat health food. Mm. Like if I went over to a friend's house. We can house, tell. Look at you. Oh, yeah. Because yes, I'm so healthy. Hallelujah. But I'm grateful to God because she was a pioneer. She had her own television show. Mm. Her, the first one was called Cooking Around the World. Wow. And then... Um, we would like have like um, all the same. My sister and I, we would go on it. We'd have our safari outfits, and then we would cook some like African dish or Wonderful. something like that. We'd stir and go, mm, and it was exciting and everything. Wonderful. <laughs> now we will we will invite uh, Pastor Chema. Uh, mother to come to the show and share to us about that and we are going to back very soon and talk about, about book writing about the ministry of Pastor Chema please stay back as we are going to move on with the part number two and be ready for a wonderful show together with Brother Paul right now that honey out of the rock. Thank you so much for coming to the Pastor Talk together with Reverend Dr. Joshua Yu and Pastor Gemma Wenger, the pastor, <laughs> music com com composer, uh, author, writer, educator. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm sure that you will be blessed in next show together with Pastor Gemma. Thank you. Amen. God bless.